with Jason Tulio of Rappler.com here at the uh, Navy Gym in Fort Bonifacio, Global City, where we have another eight-round fight coming up in the bantamweight division now. Ernesto Saulong, also of uh, Santa Rosa City, against Arno Baconage of Ilo Ilo. Baconage is a uh, Five, I think I'm saying that right. This five and one with five knockouts. He is in the white trunks. And Sao Long is 18, two and one, seven knockouts. It's a rare thing. The records are basically even. Although if you look behind the numbers, uh, as we look at his record here, he's had a, I would say Sao Long has fought the better opposition. The one time that Baconage, I hope I'm saying that right. Baconage. Uh, Bakanahe, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> the one time that Bakanahe fought a fighter with a winning record, he took a unanimous decision loss. That was just in April. Lost to Warren Mambunang. Mambuanag. But Salong is also coming off of a loss. Uh, he lost a uh, unanimous decision in South Africa. Uh, in his last fight, that was in December of 2015. That was a vacant WBO international bantamweight title fight. So at least we we know Sao Long has gotten the distance with uh, quality fighters. And we were actually before we went uh, on the air, we were just speaking about boxing trivia, and I mentioned Ray Magreno, and. The first loss that Sao Long took was to Ray Magrino, a third round knockout in 2014. I think the crowd might start to get restless here. This is a very tit for tat, very technical first round. These two obviously have a lot of respect for each other and they're definitely feeling each other out here in this first round. Although Sao Long was trying to feel out but Bakonahe's uh, chin with that right hand. Pronunciation 101 with my partner Ryan Tongali here. <laughs> You don't meet many people named uh, Baconaje in Jersey City, New Jersey. But Sao Long is definitely the aggressor here. Looking to drop a right hand over that jab, the lazy jab of Baconaje. That's a good observation, Ryan. It definitely is a lazy jab. It's, it's teetering very low, just below his chest. And as some boxing boxing historians would know, that's uh, that's the little mistake that uh, Max Schmeling spotted in Joe Lewis in the first fight, and that's what led to the knockout. It's an invitation to drop a right hand on the jaw, and Sao Long is looking to take him up on that. Although Bakanahe answers with a two-punch combination there. Well, what we can tell so far uh, beyond the records is that both guys know how to box. Uh, that both guys have a bit of experience. They sort of know what they're doing so far. And so far, they're fairly evenly matched, which you know, is, a, is a nice change in the professional ranks here tonight.
it's going to be interesting to see uh, as the uh, fight wears on who was able to assert his uh, game plan better. Uh, we didn't see that many uh, body punching, too many body punches so far in the first round. Um, so it looks like a lot of head hunting. Bakanahe was looking to box. It looks like Bakanahe is looking to box and win a decision. Sao Long is looking for a knockout tonight. That and um, Sao Long's trainer is looking for a place to sit. Yeah, that too. Beginning of round two. Jason, what do you make of that? Uh, when you see boxers uh, try to touch gloves uh, to begin rounds, uh, that, that's appropriate in sparring. Uh, you can get cracked in the mouth uh, doing that in the pros. Well, I mean, the rule is protect yourself at all times. And if you do get cracked doing that, yeah, maybe it's in bad taste, maybe it's bad sportsmanship, but it's perfectly legal, as we saw with uh, Victor Ortiz versus um, Floyd Mayweather. But at the same time, I think it's just a you know a short, short but sweet sign of respect. You know, you just just a quick tap of the gloves, and you're ready to go. Well, I that, there was nothing short about that left hook there that Bakanahe just landed. Bakanahe's jab, uh, Bakanahe's left hand continues to hang dangerously low, especially after he throws that jab. It's just... And he just played for there, going straight back with his hands down. Eats a right hand and a left hook off the ropes. But Sao Long's, it seems as if he's falling off balance uh, whenever he attempts a punch. He's putting so much into them. And um, it's almost like his uh, hands are far in front of his feet. So he's there to be countered, too. Oh, nice left hook there by Bakanahe. Short little one inside by Saolong. And then Bakanahe pushes him off. See... Bakanahe is taking advantage of Sao Long's aggression here because Sao Long is just following him around the ring. He's not really cutting it off. Although there he has Bakanahe squared up right in front of him and he takes advantage with a three punch combination. Bakanahe now starting to work the body. I think he might be looking at this fight a little bit more long term now. Um, he's trying to wear down Sao Long. I think he's in it for the long haul. And as any fighter would know, those digs to the body, they take their toll in the later rounds. Like but the fighter, generally speaking, the fighter who's going backwards is expending more energy than the fighter who's coming forward. Oh, So Long gets rocked with a left oh. hook and another one after it. So Long's in huge trouble. Bakanahe comes up the middle with an uppercut around. Left hand, right hand. So Long's firing back. So Long's saying, I'm not ready to go yet. And now it's Bakanahe who's taking punches along the ropes. Bakanahe caught him, caught Sao Long with his chin up in the air, made him pay. What was that warning for? I heard a headbutt. Oh, there, was there a headbutt? I, I didn't see one. I think we were on the wrong angle, but I, if I heard the referee correctly, he's being warned for a headbutt. Oh, they're, they're looking... Here comes the doctor. Looks like they're going to examine a cut, actually. Ah, that came via headbutt, I would imagine. And it appears to be on the right eye. Referee, the doctor says, it's good to go. Fight's going to continue. Good round for Saolong. Ah, oh, sorry, for Bakanahe. Yeah, for, uh, that was the first time uh, in the second round where Bakanahe, he, he, instead of just moving and, and firing off quick combinations, he stood his ground, planted a left hook, and sent Sao Long going backwards. But Sao Long showed a lot of toughness in that round. He came back, uh, and then by the end of the round, he had, uh, had Bakanahe back, uh, backpedaling once again. 
this is an eight round fight so we're a quarter of the way through I think um, it's gonna get a lot more competitive and then you know I'm, I'm predicting that it stays competitive up into the late rounds um, these guys are haven't you know haven't expended themselves too much just yet and there hasn't been a whole lot of body punching in the first two rounds that could prematurely wear down either of the fighters as round number three begins Salong's looking to catch up on the scorecards with one big punch here. Nice little counter right hand by Bakanahe. I'm starting to think now that Bakanahe is actually inviting that right hand so he can fire off with a quick left hook counter or a right hand counter. Although he just eats a jab there because his left hand was low. If I had to make a bet, I would say Sao Long is the bigger puncher. Bakanahe has the faster hands. But sometimes when you aren't the bigger puncher, uh, you learn to rely on other things. And I think that's serving Bakanahe well so far. I think Bakanahe has the better timing. He's got, he's got the slightly better defense. And I think that's paying dividends right now. Salong just eating com or eating counter punches on the way in. And he's doing the same thing you mentioned earlier, Ryan. He's not really cutting off the ring. He's just marching straight in. Ooh, although he does land a good right hand there. As soon as Bakanahe turns the corner, he's he's lost. Especially because Bakanahe is doing a great job of Oh, what a nice left hook by Bakanahe! And a right hand counter after it. Sao Long just has no defense for any of these pot shots. And another right hand by Bakanahe. But Sao Long showing he's still got power and he's still dangerous. But Bakanahe is, just seems much more comfortable with where this fight is going right now. It's definitely Bakanahe's fight. He's controlling the pace. He's the matador. He's the matador in this fight. He's leading the way. Absolutely. Just the way that Bakanahe seems to be commanding whatever Sao Long is trying to do with his left hand. And at a certain point, you're going to see frustration settle in for Sao Long. Keep in mind, these are two fighters who are coming off of a loss. This is a bit of a crossroads fight here. Neither guy can afford to take a loss here. And they're both fighting like it. As Sao Long gets in a little right hand, another right hand. I think Bakanahe is stunned. Bakanahe comes back with a combination of his own. Nice combination. And a left hook counter by Sao Long. We've got a fight here. That's what the crowd wants to see. Excellent third round. And of course, many of the, many of the men from the uh, military here at the uh, Navy gym are enjoying this action. It's interesting that they, uh, they have what appears to be lawn chairs as uh, corner stools. Neither, neither man is uh, taking a seat though, as they adjust Sao Long's trunks appear to be rubbing Sao Long's legs in the corner. I don't know if he's been complaining about uh, some cramps or a bit of fatigue. Well, getting punched in the face is a quick way to get tired. Yes, and also a quick way to have your, your legs feel wobbly. You know, I, I never like it when a trainer in between rounds starts showing a guy by demonstrating how to punch. That's something you have to already know when you get there. <laughs> I think some trainers tend to get very animated. I mean, you know, you have the Freddy... Oh, and a nice uppercut by Bakanahe. Snaps his head back. So long was looking at the, the lights on the ceiling there. So I was saying, you have some trainers who tend to get, get very excited in the corner. You know, you have the Freddy Virtues who are very zen, very calm. And then there are others who, you know, they... 
they express themselves better with their actions, and that's what we saw in uh, Salong's corner. In the meantime, what he should have been trying to uh, demonstrate to Sao Long was how to cut off this ring. He's following Bakanahe around, and Bakanahe's slapping him around every time he comes close to him. It's starting to become a predictable pattern. Uh, Sao Long will come in straight up. Uh, uh, Bakanahe will throw a counter left hook, counter right hand, turn the corner, and he's gone. There it is again. Just as he did right there. But as we see, every time Sao Long lets his hands go, when he gets Bakanahe in front of him, he is still a very dangerous fighter. Bakanahe is starting to stand in the corner a little too long. He can't afford to be doing that. Gets a big puncher like Sao Long. Yes, uh, Bakanahe takes a right hand and a couple body shots now. I think perhaps they were stressing that in the corner. And then, oh, and now goes Bakanahe on a body shot. Count is up to five, six, seven, eight. He's hurt. All of that movement must have taken a lot of the energy and steam out of Bakanahe. He's got a lot of time to survive here. I was beginning to say that Bakanahe does not have the luxury to stand straight. Oh, and another and down body he goes shot. Again. Down on another body shot. Five. And it doesn't appear he's going to be getting up from that one. Corner's trying to win him over. on. That's it. It's over. Incredible comeback win for Ernesto Salong. That's the beauty of the sport. One punch can end it. Salong was behind on the cards. He was getting outboxed, but, you know, a couple of good, well-timed body shots, and then he gets a victory. There's something I've never seen before. A fighter lifts his trainer uh, in celebration of the victory. Well, uh, his, his trainer was having his own boxing match in between rounds, so he deserves a win as much as Salong does. Th that was uh, an incredible turn of events there for Ernesto Salong, who appeared to be uh, a bit lost in the fight uh, strategically. Uh, he went to the body, and Bakanahe just couldn't take it to the midsection. Um, after the first knockdown, we saw uh, there was a lot of time left for uh, Bakanahe to survive. Uh, he was not able to, uh, and intelligently, Sao Long went right back to the body, and the fight was over from there. Sao Long is going to improve to 19-2-1 with eight knockouts. And just goes to show, you know, while headhunting might be the more, you know, spectator-friendly practice, uh, body shots pay off. I mean, a well-timed body shot, your opponent is still wide awake, but they cannot move. I don't care how tough you are or how good your chin is, uh, a well-placed body shot will get you every time. Here's the official announcement. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is now, once more, Ernesto Salong picks up the victory, the knockout victory. He's back on the winning track after losing his previous bout by unanimous decision in South Africa last December. For Rappler.com, I'm Ryan Sungali and this is Jason Tulio. We'll see you for the next fight.